here we go. It's all together. It's just like a, 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 a little laptop computer. Now, I put in a, I put in a, a, a little notch here so you can get your finger in here and open up the lid real easy, you know. And I threw a little bezel on here to kind of block some of the backlight off. Make that good, but that's unimportant. What I did was, is I plugged this in and uh, uh, the light came on on the computer. Everything went fine, but nothing happened in the thing. Uh, this in here is actually a, a fairly old Raspberry Pi. This is a couple years old. I've had this for a while. I haven't done anything with it. It just kind of sat around. I put a Raspbian operating system on it with the Pixel desktop, and it, and it worked just fine. So I decided to put it into this project. Well, after I got all this wiring done, uh, it wouldn't work. <laughs> it wouldn't work. <laughs> and I was scratching my head trying to figure out oh, what did I do? Did I blow it out with my ham-fisted soldering and ripping? Did I mess this thing up? I didn't, I didn't know. And then I, went, I took a look at my mouse that was plugged in. And you see that, uh, see that, 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 that red light down there? There was no red light on the mouse. And I go, oh, there's no five volts. So I went and I checked and there was no five volts on the USB. So I started looking around and looking around and sure enough, after an hour of troubleshooting, I don't know, maybe more, I found out that this connector right here, which is now no longer mounted correctly as it would be in the, in the hole pattern. They're just kind of flying wires. Well, the plus five volt and the ground were touching inside the housing. Um, I quickly put some little pieces of insulation, basically clippings of wire insulation in there to hold the pieces off the housing. And, uh, and it fired right up. So that was a little thing that happened that, well, you know, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to have Raspbian, which is Linux uh, or Linux, or I don't even know how to pronounce it, but eh, um, I want that to run uh, some software that I found called, uh, let's see, it's, it's right here. It's, um, it's called Teleprompter Core. And uh, this is a... Uh, basically a website that acts as a teleprompter. And I want to have the thing resident inside of here. I don't want to Wi-Fi into anything. I don't want to have no external connections like that, except for maybe plugging in a keyboard to type a command or two. That's it. That's all I want to have going on with this. So uh, what we need to do is we need to get this teleprompter core software and um, get it loaded. Now, in order for teleprompter core software to work on here, I'm going to need a web server on here. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to take my installation of Raspbian and I'm going to put uh, Apache web server on here, which will then serve up the teleprompter core page. And all I have to do is click the icon for the browser and my teleprompter software will come up. That's the idea. Before we go off on a tear here, I want to cover a couple things first. This computer here was set up with uh, Raspbian. Now, it doesn't come with Raspbian. This is something that you add to the system uh, to get it to work. There's a uh, SD card in here. Hold on. Let me get this out of here. There we go. And there's the SD card. That's 32 gigabytes micro SD. And that contains the Raspbian operating system, the Pixel desktop, and whatever other software you want to put on here. And the way that uh, at least I have to make these things is uh, with a regular computer. And I use a SD card adapter that I plug into the USB in my computer. And it shows up as a drive on the system. Yeah, let me, let me show you. Put the SD card in here. Okay. And then we plug it into USB and wait for it to connect up to the computer. It's a coming. Oh, there it is. SD32G. First thing that uh, Raspberry Pi org recommends is to use the uh, SD card formatter to format the uh, SD card. Here it is. 
will change its name to boot because that's a cool name and we'll format and we'll continue and uh, the magic password and we're done okay that was pretty easy now the next thing you want to do is we want to put a, a Raspbian image on here. So all we need to do is go to uh, raspberrypi.org. There we go. Raspberry Pi site. First thing to do is go to downloads and downloads comes up. Now you got two options, noobs or Raspbian. Noobs is a good general purpose one, but in our case, we just want to go for Raspbian right now. So we click Raspbian and download the zip file of Raspbian Buster with desktop and recommended software. Save the file. Download. All right, almost halfway there. Now let's uh, go back to our desktop here. Here's our boot volume. And uh, what we want to use now is uh, a nice little tool that Raspbian recommends. It's called uh, Etcher. Let me bring that up. And what we're going to do with Etcher is we're going to take that downloaded zip file and unpack it and flash it into the SD card. So what we want to do is we want to select our image. There we go. And uh, I got it down right there. And we open it and we select our target, which is generic multimedia 319. Continue. And we flash. Ah the magic password so this should give us our uh, Raspbian image let's take a look at the desktop let's come over here to our boot drive and take a look at it and oh there we go there's our raspian image now for the most part you just take this thing now pop it inside your raspberry pi and start it up answer a few startup questions and you're done but not here <laughs> this monitor this elcro 1024 by 600 monitor has a little unique situation in that it's non-standard as far as Raspbian is concerned. There, let me show you here on the monitor. We'll close this and we'll go to do, 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 which one here? Go to go to video options and config text. A lot of reading but there's a lot of uh, parameters. This is for SDTV. We're not interested, we're interested in HDMI okay and there's hdmi safe these are different configuration commands that you can give the thing and there's a, a few that we'd be interested in here and that would be the mode ah here we go hdmi mode now this sets up uh the type of monitor that you have you can see that you get the uh, uh, 640 by 480 or 480p, 720p, 1080i at 60 hertz, and there's a there's a code number, a mode number off to the side here. These are for CEA, uh, which is basically a, a television standard. What we want is a digital monitor standard, and we go past these 59, and then we go into what's known as a DMT, which is a digital monitor standard. In here. We have 86 different types of screens. 
1856 by 1392 at 75 hertz. 1920 by 1200 hertz at 75 hertz. Well, we've got 1024 by 600 at 60 hertz. And if you look through all 86 of these, you're not going to find, well, we ain't going to get into that too, too much at this point. You can go look at these yourself inside of the Raspbian's documentation. That's what, I'm, that's what we're looking at right now. Now, what we're really interested in is custom mode. Seeing as our mode isn't handled, we're going to have to declare, we're going to have to declare our own mode in order to make this monitor work. Now, there's parameters you have to put in, but what we need to do is we need to define an HDMI CVT. Well, let me back up. First, we need to define the HDMI group. Then we need to define the HDMI mode, which in our case is going to be 87, which is one beyond the 86 in the list. That makes us a custom mode. So we add on. And then the most important one is HDMI CVT. Uh, I, I was going to explain this here, but it's going to take too much time. you got to go read it yourself. But what we have to do is we have to add that configuration to our, uh, our boot image here. And we add that configuration in a file called config text. It should come up in the text editor, and there it is. And this is config text here. And right at the end of the file, down here at the bottom, we're going to add code, which I've already typed out and I've got it in a file over here and there's our patch code but what we're going to do is we're going to set max USB current equals one which means give me the most current through the USB port you can set the amount of current you get current equals one is the max HDMI group 2 because this is a digital monitor HDMI mode 87 because this is a custom configuration and then HDMI CVT which contains parameters. The width, 1024. The height, 600. The frequency, 60 hertz. The six is a special situation. You gotta read it up and take your calculator out and figure out. That's the aspect ratio. It's weird. And then zero, zero, and zero. Zero is um, if you got a border. We don't want a border. Zero here means that it's a progressive scan. This is a progressive scan. And zero here makes no um, um, reverse blanking or something like that. We're going to take this code and we're going to paste it into this file. There we go. And then we're going to save this file. And we're done. All right. And just to make sure, here's our boot volume. Get config text back up. Take a look at the bottom. And there's our configuration that will turn our monitor on. Now that you see how I had to set up Raspbian on the computer, let's get around to doing what we were going to do in the first place. Put, a, put the Apache web server on the computer. Plug in a keyboard. First thing here. Let's get a keyboard in there. There we go. Got a keyboard. And let's uh, give her some power. Change the lighting. And there we go. Now we can go over here, get ourselves a little command shell, and we go sudo apt git inst install apache2-y and hit return. Now let's see what happens. Huh. That didn't, that looks like it looks like it's, oh, geez. If we look up here, we're not online. What does it say? No wireless interface found. Hmm. Well, let's take a look. Let's try uh, this command. sudo iwlist wlan0 scan. Interface doesn't support scanning. Uh-oh. What the heck is going on here? <sighs> I don't have any Wi-Fi. Ah, jeez. Let's see. What do we got in here? 
Everything looks hooked up okay. Yeah. Everything's everything's all right. Uh, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? All right, so let's take a let's take a look at a few things under the microscope here. What do we got? Here's our number one. Yeah, get her in focus. There it is. That's the Wi-Fi antenna. It's a chip antenna. And uh, we can say, oh, made in PRC. <laughs> I wonder where that is. <laughs> anyway, the chip antenna looks good. Let's look at the underside, which is where it hooks to. Let's get that up here. Let's see, there. There's the underside of the Wi-Fi. The antenna comes in through there comes in through a capacitor, through a couple uh, resistors, and then into this, which is a, uh, a bandpass filter. And then it comes down through here, another capacitor across, a diode, a resistor, and into this chip, which is a, um, a CYW43438 Wi-Fi chip. It does uh, both uh, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And what I'm looking for is to see if I got any busted little parts and everything looks good. I didn't, unless I thought maybe uh, as I was doing my work on soldering things that I, that I knocked one of these little parts off, but no, everything looks fine. So there may be a problem in this chip and there's no way I'm going to pull this and reball a 63 ball grid array as tiny is this. <laughs> I know what to do. What we're going to do here is we're going <laughs> to try a spare Raspberry Pi. See if it see if it works okay. Let's get this out. And there's a spare. Let's uh let's unplug this one. And plug in this one. And give it this USB power over here. We're almost there. Let's plug a keyboard into this. And last but not least, let's get the let's get the SD card out of this. right here and put the SD card into this one there and let's just give it a test here yeah this is it's kind of, kind of cumbersome uh, don't want nothing to short out but let's just kind of put this like this and let's just give it a little power and let's see what happens kill these overheads so you can see a little better all right yeah and you know I don't know, can you see that we got Wi-Fi so I imagine our installation will work now and put in that sudo apt git install Apache 2 oh it's going a lot different this time it looks like it's been installed okay that's all I needed the Wi-Fi for I'll put it back together the way it was slip that SD card in the old machine with the busted Wi-Fi and we'll be off and running. Close her back up. Get some power and uh, get this thing here squared up to the camera. There we go. Let's get some keyboard into this thing. Oh, there's a keyboard. Get that plugged in. Okay. And then let's get some power in this thing and 
see what we've done. Power up. And here it comes. The picture, the picture might be a little blurry and gloomy and it's kind of hard to shoot. And I'm also too, I'm shooting through this, this protective film here that I'm keeping on the cover here until I get everything figured out. I don't want to scratch nothing up. Okay, so here we are. We're set up. And what should happen is when we go to a browser, all right, and we go to a thing called localhost. And we hit return. Oh, there it is. That's the Apache 2 Debian default page. That's our web page. So we're right now we're serving up web pages on the browser and uh, we're not hooked up to the internet. Let me go into the configuration on this browser down here to settings and set this up so that uh, instead of open the new tab page here we select open a specific page and we set the specific page we'll use the current page okay and say okay and we'll close it and then we'll try opening it again make sure it comes up to that uh, Debian page yep okay browser set Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to uh, get ourselves a command shell here. We're going to do a little Unix command line stuff. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the directory where that web page should, would, would be by uh, issuing a, a cd uh, slash var slash www slash html. Okay, and we're there, and so we go uh, ls-lg to see what's in there, and there's our index HTML page. All right, uh, so what we want to do is we're going to issue a command here, sudo, hold on, sudo chown pi colon index html. I'm uh, changing ownership on that file ls-lg and we can see now that uh, that file is owned by pi which is me let's go down to directory cd dot dot and we'll go um, once again sudo chown pi html okay ls-lg to look at it and it's owned by pi so we'll uh, cd to html. There's our index file. And now the last thing we want to do um, is uh, rename that file. And I don't want to get rid of it. We're, we're going to keep it. But So we go uh, sudo mv move. It works like rename. index.html to uh, index old dot html and then we uh take a look and see and there we go we got index old we're done there we go back to the uh our, our desktop here and what we're going to do is we're going to load in this usb stick and it has that teleprompter core software on it let me put this in here. Oh, first thing I want to do before I put that in, is I want to open up this folder. And we want to set up for, let me set up for slash. There. So we want var, uh, www, and HTML. And there's our directory. Okay, now we want to put in our flash drive with our teleprompter core software and open it up in this thing and there it is and then we wanna we wanna select all and then we wanna copy and we wanna go over here back to this one and now we're in this directory and we wanna paste 
And there it is. It's in there. Let's see. So, if I get rid of that, and get rid of that, pull that thing out, and we go to our browser. There's our teleprompter software. Improvise, adapt, and overcome.